Hello children. In this video, we will discuss chemical coordination in humans. For chemical coordination, we have specialized organs in our body named as glands. These glands are specialized cells, specialized tissues or specialized organs which secrete certain chemicals for various metabolic activities and those chemicals are known as hormones and these organs, these specialized structures are known as glands. As we are all aware, bache, all are aware that in human beings there are two systems for control and coordination are there and the two systems are nervous system which we have discussed in our previous videos and in this video we will discuss the chemical coordination that is the hormones, the chemical substances which helps in the coordinating activities or which helps in the metabolic activities of a living organism are known as hormones. So, for chemical coordination we have hormones. So, first of all we will discuss what are hormones. Hormones are the chemical substances secreted by glands for proper growth, development and metabolism or metabolic activities. Those chemicals are known as, those chemical substances are known as hormones. There are certain features of hormones. There are certain specific characteristics or features of hormones. The first one is they are required in very small amount. So you can add this point in the definition as well. Hormones are the chemical substances which are required in very small quantity, which are required in very small amount and released by the glands for the proper growth and development are known as hormones. Second, hormones are target specific. We will discuss about the glands, then we will discuss about the, glands, then we'll discuss about the endocrine glands. This is what the part of your 10th class is. The endocrine glands are also known as ductless glands, the glands which release their secretion into the blood. And from blood, they only act upon its specific target cell. For example, the hormone released by the pituitary gland which is present in the brain near the midbrain or below the midbrain release certain hormones which control the various glands like thyroid in the neck region, parathyroid in the neck region, the next gland, thymus in the chest region, then liver, pancreas, all these gland secretions are controlled by pituitary. So the hormones which control their secretion, their activation and inhibition are released by pituitary and come to their specific target site, will come to their specific site and only then they work. So they are target specific, site specific. Third, over secretion and under secretion. If they are secreted in more amount than their usual or required amount or they are released in less amount than their usual or appropriate amount, in both the cases they cause diseases they have adverse effect which they are under secretion as well as their over secretion they are more secretion than their usual amount as well as the less secretion than their usual amount both will cause problems both will cause certain diseases in human beings next question hormones are released by plants So glands are the specific cells, tissues or the organs which release certain chemicals named as hormones which helps in the growth and development and control and coordinating activities of humans along with the nervous system. So these are certain features of hormones which are secreted in our body. Now we will discuss the glands. Glands are the cells, tissues or organs that secrete something, that secrete certain chemicals, certain substances 
to perform a particular function. Those cells, organs, or tissues are known as glands. So glands are the specialized cells, tissues, or organs that release something, that secrete something for the performance of a particular function. Those are referred as glands. Now we discuss types of glands. The first type is exocrine glands. Exocrine means the glands which release their secretion by the help of ducts. So they secrete their hormones, their enzymes or whatsoever their secretions are by the help of ducts, by the help of certain pipes directly onto the target site on their own. Khud ba khud apni duct ki help se bachcho apne secretion ko direct target site pa daalti hain. Those are referred as exocrine glands. The example of exocrine glands are sweat glands, oil or sebaceous glands, these both glands, both of these glands are present under a skin or present in a skin. Next one are milk glands in the female, also known as mammary glands. Next, gastric glands. About the gastric glands, we have discussed in the first chapter life processes that there are these specific juices known, named as gastric juice. The second type of glands which we have to discuss are endo crying glands. These glands are also known as ductless glands. The glands which do not possess ducts. The glands which release their secretion, which secrete their secretion directly into the blood. And through blood, through the circulatory system, those secretions will reach their target site and work accordingly. The example of endocrine glands, these glands we will discuss in the detail as well. Pituitary gland, hypothalamus, thyroid, parathyroid, thymus gland, these glands are endocrine glands. They do not possess ducts and they release their secretions into the blood circulatory system and through blood those secretions, those hormones are transported from one part of the body to their target site, to their acting site where those hormones will going to act. The third ones are known as heterocrine glands. What are heterocrine glands? The glands which have endocrine as well as exocrine functions or you can say secretions. That is, they release their secretions into the blood circulatory system. That is the endocrine function as well as they secrete certain substances by the help of their respective duct as well. These are the glands that have endocrine function. They have their secretion, their releases in blood and they have their blood help to reach their target site. As well as they have exocrine functions or secretion. That is, they secrete their secretions into the target site or onto the target site by the help of their respective ducts. And the example of heterocrine gland is pancreas. It releases pancreatic juice by the help of its pancreatic duct. The pancreatic duct actually its name is. So this function is exocrine function. The next one is it releases hormones. Two hormones released by pancreas insulin and glycogen and those uh, glucagon sorry and those hormones are released into the blood and that function is referred as a 
and the brain function. So the pancreas, are, uh, pancreas is an example of heterocrine gland, which perform exocrine function, which secrete their secretion directly onto the target site by the help of duct, as well as it releases its secretion into the, into the blood. And by the help of the blood, it reaches to its target site. So these are the three glands, that is exocrine, endocrine, and heterocrine glands. The fourth thing which we discuss under the glands is mixed organs. What are mixed organs? The specific glands, the specific structures which release a cytogenic secretion, that means cell forming function, they release certain kind of cells as well as they perform endocrine functions. Those organs or or glands are known as mixed organs. The example of mixed organs are ovaries. They release ovum, that is the cytogenic function. They release a cell, gamete, a reproductive cell, as well as they secrete hormones. So the secretion of hormones the major hormones are released by the estrogens, that is the oestrogen and progesterone. That function is endocrine function, and they produce a certain kind of or specialized kind of cell, and that is cytogenic function. The other organ under it is testes. They release or they produce sperm, the male gamete, the cell which is necessary for the production of young one, for the reproduction in human beings or in animals, and it also releases certain hormone, and that hormone is named as testosterone. So, these two are referred as mixed organs. As well as till 10th class, these two organs are studied under the heterocrine glands as well. So, these are the four types of glands which we discuss under the topic glands.